Hey YouTube, it's Iona coming to you from Vegan Legacy. Um, just got up and um, today's my laundry day, cleaning, etc. Get ready for the week. And so it is the 9th, uh, July 9th, and my last weigh in was June 9th. And so in June 9th, I was 225. So we'll see over these last um, 30 days how much weight I've lost. And that includes some of the days I did juicing, some I did like a water fast. These are all just random stuff, it's not intentional. Um, and then I did uh, the test videos, um, which increased the sodium too. You know, I had some swelling after doing some of those test videos. And then just eating like the SOS, try like a day of that. And so let's see what my results are. Let's turn it around here so you guys can see the scale is set on zero. Just put my shoes here. And then, yeah, that's me. Hey, I got crazy bed hair today because I haven't done anything with it. Um, okay, right, stand up straight. Yeah, I don't think it's going to change when I bend over. Let's see. As you can see there, the needle is at 2.15. And so that is 10 pounds for this 30 days, which is good. I think 10 pounds in 30 days is a good amount um not like before when i did the raw because when i did the raw last time i lost 30 pounds in 30 days and that was like really fast of course i think with raw you're just cleaning cleaning out not that i thought i had 30 pounds of of waste to get rid of but ooh, sorry um but yeah and then I lost the total. When I did fully ride, I lost the total of 61 in three months, which is pretty fast. But you gotta think about it. You're just doing raw fruits and vegetables. You're getting that raw nutrition. And I was eating a lot, but I was also losing a lot of weight very, um, in a fat, I mean, three months, 61 pounds, that's a lot. But I think your body on the fully ride, I think your body adjusts to it. Or whatever and I think a lot of people fail on fully raw because they don't eat enough calories and so but the fully raw like when you're like really sick I mean for me that's why I started the whole thing and that's how I became vegan actually I started the raw first this hair look crazy um I started the raw first and um the first week I was just gonna try it and the first week, like, I felt amazing. All the symptoms in my body were gone because I was having pain. I was feeling very lethargic, tired all the time. Of course, I wasn't sleeping really good because I was working like crazy, just busy, um, not eating the best foods, you know, doing college and working, a uh, single mom at that, and then just, just go, go, go. And, um, you know, your body eventually, it's gonna, gonna give you those messages hey I'm not doing good you're not taking care of me and so I was searching the internet and then I found uh, reach for raw she her name is now reach for more uh, cookie Taylor she's just an awesome woman I love her and she was doing at that time she was doing um, raw she was her channel was reach for raw now it's reach for more because she's not <clears throat> doing all those like like fully vegan or whatever you know she does eat lots of fruits and vegetables and stuff but she eats other things too so for some of you that are like i can never be vegan you know you can check out her channel she eats a lot of different things but she's just a really sweet lady like i've never met her but she just seems like a, a really nice genuine woman so um i'll put the link to her description uh, the link to her description <laughs> y'all hear i talk crazy on these videos um, I'll put the, in the description box, I'll put a link to her channel. <laughs> hey man, it's eight o'clock. I woke up early today. <laughs> um, and so, so yeah, so I will take you and show you what I'm going to have today. Hope you enjoy. Blessings. Hey, I'm back. And 
The first thing I like to start my day off with um, is a lemon water. Just put some lemon in there, cut it up, and um, it's really good. Um, it's really good if you could do it like the night before, but <laughs> I don't think about it. Uh, sometimes I do, and um, and get some mint from the garden and do some infused water. It's really good. Cucumber. There's a lot of things. That's a gosh in the background, cracking up at my video. But um, yeah. Anyways, this is really good. And refreshing in the morning. So I highly uh, recommend you guys trying that. Very good. <sighs> mm. This is room temperature water. Very good. So I'm gonna have this and then I'm gonna eat some of that yellow watermelon. Do your lips do that? It looks kind of creepy. I think it's probably from when I was in my late teens and I used to smoke. Smoking is a nasty habit. Don't ever do it. It's so gross. And if you do smoke now, do try and quit. Maybe you've tried and tried, but you just got to do it. Go for it. And um, I don't know. I quit after I gave my life to the Lord. So that just, I don't know. I just... I believe God helped me with that. Not that God's not helping you guys, that you guys want to quit, but that was just what happened with me. Like, I didn't want anything to do with it. Um, and then, I, too, at that time, then I was going to be settling down, you know, getting married, you know, and start a family. So I didn't want, you know, any of those bad habits. So that was another motivation for me to stop. Yes. Okay. You going to go play? You want to come say hi? No. <laughs> He's a no, I'm good. But yeah, all you young people out there who've never smoked, good. Don't ever do it. You might end up with wrinkle lips. And I'm not even 40 yet. So, um, I didn't even smoke that long. So, I'm guessing when you're they're making it, all those things make it tight up. So when you get old, then you got wrinkle up lips. Ooh. Oh well, that's part of my journey and story. But yeah, um, when I quit, I was so glad I did because then you start puking up, or not puking up, but coughing up like all that yucky mucus and discolored mucus. It's so gross. Smoking is nasty, guys. Like it makes your teeth ugly, makes your breath smell, makes your clothes smell. It just makes you nasty and um, causes cancer guys thank god i didn't get cancer you know and seriously like it's not good for you so don't smoke don't do drugs stay in school get your education <laughs> Sorry, does that gross you out? Okay, I won't spit it back in there. Coming out of your mouth. My mouth. Going in my mouth. <sighs> it's 
finished the uh, finish. So I will show you the next video. Here. Here. Or here. Here. Okay guys, I'm back and I am going to try to finish up this watermelon, the yellow watermelon. And yeah. about relationship and besides we are the church you know yeah there are church buildings you know fellowships and things like that it's important to be in relationship but you can go in a church building for 30 years and have no relationship just be one of those people that just sits on the pew never interacts with people here's a sermon Clap your hands during worship or maybe sit there silently. You know, hears a sermon and then leaves, never connects with people. And that's not relationship building. You know, I think it's important that, I mean, the whole reason why are we going to fellowship together? You know, so we can encourage each other. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, get to know one another. You know, and it's... Uh, like a huge family, you know, if we're going to be together for eternity, you know, we got to get along together, got to get to know each other, you know, and that's what it's about, but yeah, for me, like, Sundays are my laundry day here, um, and so it's set apart for laundry, cleaning, and all that, I do go to a fellowship on Saturdays, I didn't go last night, but, um, and sometimes I don't go uh, at the whole week. I might not go to a fellowship the whole week, but I'm in contact with people all week, you know. And you're in, from my take, I mean, it's your relationship with the Lord is, excuse me, that water might make you burp. Um, the, your relationship with the Lord is, is constant. It's not that just because you went to the building you had a relationship with God. No, that's just a building, you know. It's like this: you can go sit in your garage all day long. It's not gonna make you a car, a truck, or whatever, a vehicle, you know, just by sitting in your garage. The same thing with these church buildings. You're gonna be sitting up in there 30, 40 years. Doesn't make you a believer in Christ. You know, there are some people that have been doing that for years and that you can't tell because they have no love for people. I mean, you gotta love people. If you're a believer, you gotta have love. I mean, as simple as that, you know? That's why some people see people that aren't Christian and they seem like they got more love than people that claim to, <coughs> sorry, that claim to be Christians. You know? So, it's more importantly that you have a relationship, you know? But a lot of people are hurting. You know, and they don't know how. It's just simple. Reaching out to God. You know, if you're mad at God, maybe you're mad at God. Just tell God you're mad at Him. He already knows anyways. You know, and it kind of helps when you just confess that. And just be like, God. I mean, you don't have to have anybody around you to confess it to. I mean, yeah, the Bible does talk about confessing your faults to one another. Pray for one another and be healed. You know. But also to God, like how much more to Him when He cares for you. Just be like, God, I'm mad at you, you know, this, this, and I feel you let this, these things happen in my life and it affect me, you know, and just keep it real, you know, and then just be like, God, I don't want to feel this way because ultimately you're, you're a good God. You're supposed to be good, 
you know, it says your mercy endures forever, you know, so God help me, you know, to get over that so I can have a relationship with you, so I can know your love, heal me, you know, and then when God comes in and heals you of those things, like, dude, it's amazing, you know, but, um, anyways, I was saying Saturday, I digress, guys, I bounce all over the place, but, um, Saturday, I do go to a fellowship on Saturday nights, it's called Freedom Houston Outpost, so if you guys are Freedom Outpost Houston, sorry, dyslexic sometimes, <laughs> so, um, if you guys are in the Houston area, come check it out on a Saturday night, they have building, uh, bridging connections, it usually starts at four, they feed you at five, usually some great food, um, not always vegan, but they, um, usually will have some vegan options like fruits or salad or stuff like that, um, and they do a good job of it, so you don't have to be vegan to go, you know, we do have, um, our, uh, the worship leader, one of the worship leaders, she's, I found out she's vegan, so I want to do an interview with her coming up, um, soon when I get a chance, um, I don't know, I'm starting orientation for my new job tomorrow, so I'll be busy, so I won't be able to make too many videos, but I try to at least once a week, like on my Sunday, when I'm off, to do some videos, or whatever, but, yeah, so I'll put the link in the description below to Freedom Outpost Houston, or otherwise known as FOH, and so, yeah, Bridging Connections, it's just a small group of people that come together. And these people that come to FOH is like from all different areas of Houston, different churches. It doesn't matter what your background is. You can just come, meet people, connect. They feed you at 5 and then 6 o'clock. Um, the uh, service starts, worship, you know, and whatever. And they'll you have different speakers from time to time. And um, it's just a, a nice little fellowship. To go to so I do go to that on Saturdays and fellowship and then to um, I know a lot of different ministries around Houston and because I like to connect with people and I mean I have that introvert side where I like I want to be away from all people but I do love people and I like connecting with them seeing what they're doing what's God doing in their lives and that is beautiful and so, you may be watching and you may be like, man, God don't exist, God, and you're just like bitter, or you may be watching and you're searching, you're like, is God really real? You know, just ask God for yourself, you know, God, make it real to me. <clears throat> and so, I pray, like, I'll just, let me just pray for you guys, like, right now. So, Father, I thank you for those who are watching, Father God, I thank you that, you will bless them, you will heal them, you will encourage them, Father, that you will show them, those that are searching God, that you would heal them, Lord God, wherever they've been hurt, Lord God, and I would say to you directly, if you've been hurt by a church or people that call themselves Christians, like, um, I just repent on, on their behalf and say, forgive us, so I want to stand in the gap for those Christians who've maybe done you wrong, and I'd say, um, forgive us for, for, for doing you wrong, and I pray that, that you will be healed, um, yeah, and that God would really just la lavish his love upon you, because God loves you, and God has a plan for your life, and I'm just speaking out of experience, you know, my channel is not to tell people, you have to give your life to Jesus, or any of that, no, and it's not like, you have to be vegan, you know, or, you know, you're damned or anything like that. No, I just sharing my journey, and you know, I want to keep it as real as possible. You know, and whatever, because I think people just need to see like just genuineness. You know, just real that we are all real people. People will fail you. You know, you can't put people on pedestals, and it doesn't matter what their title is. You know, you got people that will have a certain title. And they're not even doing what that title says that they're supposed to be doing, you know, because people are fallible. People will make mistakes. People will fail you. But in, ultimately, in and all, in the big picture, you love people to life. I love that saying. I heard Pastor Nelson 
Uh, he's on the on the uh, east side, and I will. He um, and Pastor Betty, um, Pastor Spirit of Life Ministries or Apostle Nelson. He's not big on titles either. He just very, just a, a people of humility. And so for Spirit of Life, I'll put a link to in, in the description below to their website. They do live stream and stuff like that, so you can check them out on the internet. Like say you don't want to go in a building and you don't want to be a, around the people, but maybe you want to hear some messages or whatever. You can go on the live stream. Same thing with FOH. They do too. And there's like a lot of other ministries um, in Houston. So if you guys are interested in that, um, I will be doing some interviews in the future with different ministries around Houston. Because that is a part of my journey and we all need each other. You know, even if you're a non-believer or like an atheist, you know, or in a different religion, you know, we, just because we have two different religions doesn't mean that we can't, you know, come together and, and love each other, you know, love each other to life. But anyways, I heard, when I heard Pastor Nelson say that many years ago, and I've been walking with the Lord since about 16 years now, and God's done amazing stuff in my life. I really need to write the books, but <clears throat> just because of all that, when I heard him say that many years ago, I was like, yeah, that is the way that you go, is that you just love people to life. You know, people who say, love me to death. No, love, love them to life. You know, speak life over people, keep it positive. And you will see, like, great change in uh, people's life when you just love them, you know, and you're, you're, not, you're not trying to show them, you know, anything else but his love for them. That's great. Anyway, that's that. <laughs>